Superfood Evolution presents How to Grow Microgreens. We'll show you specifically how to grow microgreens further on in this video. But first let's talk about what microgreens are and why they can be another option to traditional jar or vertical sprouting methods. What are microgreens? We generally place microgreens in the same category as super sprouts, but they are not really sprouts in the technical sense. Sprouts are produced from the same vegetable and herb seeds, but are eaten in the earlier stages of growth, just after the baby leaves pop out and turn green. Microgreens begin their life as sprouts, but continue to mature, sprouting up to two or more sets of leaves. Sprouts are easier, faster, and less demanding than growing microgreens but their leaves are much smaller and thus produce less edible chlorophyll. Microgreens grow roots and become thick mini hedges that, after two to three weeks growing time, you can snip off and add to salads. They also produce more bulk produce for the small amount of seeds you typically use. Sprouts grow in moist air, while microgreens grow vertically on a soil or hydroponic medium. Sunflower, buckwheat, and pea shoots can be considered microgreens, but technically they shouldn't be sprouted longer than two weeks or produce more than their first set of leaves. They also have larger leaves as compared to other microgreen varieties. Most microgreens have small leaves and are more delicate in nature, growing between one half to three inches in height. They have long white sprout stems at the bottom and two sets of leaves. Some of you might be familiar with cress, a very common microgreen grown in the UK and used on the common English cucumber sandwich. This is a good example of using sprouted seeds to grow mini green gardens that produce fresh produce right on your kitchen countertop. You can also grow some sprout varieties like broccoli, clover, mustard, radish, onion, and others as a jar sprout or as a microgreen. The new gourmet salad, super green. Microgreens, or sometimes spelled microgreens with a hyphen, are used like sprouts as a garnish, gourmet salad green, or to accent a meal or entree. They are quickly becoming the new gourmet green, described as somewhere between a sprout and a mescaline salad green. In fact, the term microgreen and growing greens in this way is a fairly new concept and first originated in the late 90s. The now popular mescaline greens, or salad mixes sold in stores across the U.S., actually began in the 1980s. Microgreens are similar to baby mescaline greens in that you grow the leaf in a short amount of time to produce a tender texture and unique young flavor compared to that of a mature lettuce plant. Benefits of growing microgreens. Low startup costs. Easy to grow. Harvested within two to three weeks. Provides more produce per teaspoons of seeds high in chlorophyll content, tastes delicious and are full of flavor, many variety options to play with, adds a creative artsy aspect to gourmet food styling. How to grow microgreens. It is easy to learn how to grow microgreens and blend your own seed mixes that combine a variety of leaf flavors, colors, and shapes. There are many options and possibilities to play with creating your own unique mixture of taste sensation and visual appeal. Here is our general how to grow microgreens guideline for indoor and or outdoor tray gardening depending on the season and growing location. Supplies you will need. One, containers, trays or sprouters, pint size, half pint size, 10 by 20 black growing trays or commercial sprouters. 2. Soil. Preferably high quality organic potting soil mixed with worm compost. Optional. 3. Seeds. Organically grown, non-GMO, and non-irradiated. And 4. Water. Use high quality filtered water or a blend of ocean water solution. 5. Sunlight. A half day of direct sunlight outside through a window or by using artificial full spectrum lighting. 6. Warmth. Best grown in warm conditions above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the variety. 7. Air. Good oxygen circulation and airflow. And 8. Seaweed solution, optional, 
for super dosing with nutrients, especially minerals. Container, tray, or sprouter. The first step in learning how to grow microgreens is to find the best container for your needs and budget. Some of you might want to save any used plastic salad mix containers so you don't have to buy one. Others might want to purchase one of the 20 by 10 thick black plastic trays commonly used to grow wheatgrass. They are a bit more heavy duty and can be purchased online or at a nursery or garden store. Your tray will also need a dark lid that blocks out the light during the germination process. Sprouters specifically designed for growing microgreens are also available. Some are simple vertical stacks of plastic or clay trays, while others are grown in slide-out trays that lay side by side. The stackable sprouters are designed to take up less counter space when you initially germinate the seeds with the lid on. With these sprouters you can start up to five trays at a time, depending on the model. Choosing your soil medium. You can grow your microgreens hydroponically, but for this video we will only discuss soil grown methods for those new to sprouting. It is less complicated and easier to learn. We like to grow our micros on homemade soil compost or high quality organic soil mixed with 10 to 20 percent worm compost. Make sure to fill up your trays to the very top of the container or sprouting tray. As you water, the soil medium will shrink down somewhat, so it is good to start out with a full tray. Buying and spreading the microgreen seeds. When you purchase bulk sprouting seeds, it is always beneficial to go with a company that sells seed exclusively for growing microgreens or sprouts. This ensures their viability and quality. We always recommend using organic, non-GMO, and non-irradiated seeds that will help to produce healthy, vibrant sprouts. Learning how to grow microgreens employs a different seed planting technique, similar to growing sunflower greens. This involves taking a few teaspoons worth of seeds and scattering them sparingly some quarter inch apart, on average over the top of your soil medium. Before spreading your seeds, make sure to moisten the soil first and then lightly mist the seeds after you scatter them over the surface. Watering your microgreens. As we mentioned, the first watering involves using a spray bottle or a mister to mist your soil medium well before you place the seeds on top. Continue lightly misting daily after the seeds are scattered and until the sprouts fully open their first set of leaves. At this point you remove the lid and now we'll be either watering at the level of the soil or if you have holes in the bottom of the tray, can soak it in a sink or tray of water. The most important thing to remember when learning how to grow microgreens is to never use overhead watering techniques except with a fine mister or leave them out in the rain. This will damage and most likely flatten them and they will have a hard time recovering. Sunlight direct or windowsill. When learning how to grow microgreens that are green and packed with chlorophyll, you must expose them to some kind of full spectrum lighting. It is always best to use direct sunlight when greening your microgreens, but this depends on the time of year and the amount of sun available. In the summer, you can leave them outside 24-7. But for cooler nighttime temps, you'll want to bring them indoors. Some micros can handle more direct sunlight than others, so also keep this in mind when placing them in the hot sun for more than two hours. The greening process is done after the lid is removed from the sprouting tray. This is what grows your leaves, so the more light, the bigger your greens will be at the end. At this point, you will be growing your greens in as much light as possible throughout the day and watering them every day. How to grow microgreens indoors. To grow microgreens indoors, you'll need to place them near a sunlit window or provide some kind of artificial full spectrum lighting or grow lights if you live in a cloudy climate. You also might want to purchase a lighted two or four tier shelf growing stand or a compact mini greenhouse stand that are specifically designed for sprouting trays of greens. A 
Appropriate lighting is an important thing to consider before you commit to starting any microgreen mini garden. Many times a kitchen windowsill is the perfect place to grow microgreens indoors. One of the best things about growing your greens this way is that you can move them around to areas that get more or less light. This is not something you can do when growing produce in the ground. We have even traveled with microgreens sprouting on the dashboard of our vehicle. Warmth, avoiding cold temperatures. One of the secrets when learning how to grow microgreens successfully is providing them with plenty of warmth. Some microgreens like basil won't even grow in temps below 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and other winter vegetables like kale or broccoli don't seem to mind cooler temps. Most micros like warmer conditions and respond accordingly by growing at a much faster rate. For colder temperatures, you can buy an electric grow mat that can be placed under the tray for additional heat. Another option is an enclosed plastic greenhouse that can hold up to four 20 by 10 trays of greens. When to harvest microgreens. Most microgreens can be harvested after the second leaves emerge and get sizable. It is always good to taste test and make sure the particular variety you are growing is ready to be picked and eaten. This is usually pretty obvious visually because you have a full hedge of beautiful greens that are dense and tightly packed. Some greens are more tall and slender, while others have bigger leaves and tend to grow closer to the soil. To harvest them, you need to get out your kitchen scissors and snip a bunch of greens at the base as close as you can to the soil. You can enjoy them fresh, immediately transferring them to your salad bowl, or they can also be stored in the fridge. We usually keep them in a plastic bag or a sealed container of some kind so they will last for several days, just like lettuce or other green leafy vegetables. List of microgreen possibilities. When you are first learning how to grow microgreens, you might feel overwhelmed when you realize the potential and assortment of seeds and greens you can actually grow this way. We recommend starting out simple with a few basic, easy to grow varieties and then eventually expanding by combining and blending your own seeds. Thanks for watching. And for more about sprouts, visit superfoodsforsuperhealth.com. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this video useful.